Welcome to Full Frontal. Let's check in with the winning, shall we? Last week was supposed to be a triumph for Republicans. After seven long years, our national nightmare of somewhat affordable health coverage would finally be over. The Republican plan to repeal Obamacare has failed. President Trump had given Republicans an ultimatum last night to vote on the bill today or he would move on to other issues. Of course, those other issues are back issues of Maxim Magazine. <laughs> so I guess Democrats kind of won the same way the cops won that car chase at the end of Thelma and Louise. <laughs> Hell, it's the closest they've had to a win in seven years. Kick off those kitten heels and go wild, Nancy. <laughs> That's also the title of Nancy's next single. It's a real club banger. Now that Trump Care has joined its similarly misbegotten siblings in a graveyard by a New Jersey golf course, President Trump wants us to know how tremendous it was. A lot of people don't realize how good our bill was because they were viewing phase one. But when you add phase two and you add phase three, which I think we would have gotten, it became a great bill. I believe that's known as the I'm a grower, not a shower defense. <laughs> Trump couldn't sell Obamacare repeal to a house that voted for it 60 times already? Closing deals is the one thing President Big Boy Truck was supposed to know how to do. If only he'd paid attention to Alec Baldwin's earlier work. <laughs> Trump had a 50-50 chance of blaming the correct political party, but he fucked that up, too. We had no Democrat support. We had no votes from the Democrats. Uh, they weren't going to give us a single vote, so it's a very difficult thing to do. This really would have worked out better if we could have had some Democrat support. Yes, and the Atlanta Falcons would have won the Super Bowl, but they had no support from the New England Patriots. Look. Yeah. Your bill was killed by friendly fire. One of the biggest obstacles to getting Trump care passed, aside from the fact that it was pure shit, was the House Freedom Caucus. 30 some odd ultra conservative Republicans with the power to block anything, most notably women and people of color. <laughs> the president thought he could schmooze the budget cutting bros with rides on Air Force One, complete with lasagna. <laughs> Garfield isn't the only bloated orange hairball who loves that stuff. The president met with the Freedom Caucus more than once, talked to individual members more than once. The president gave his all in this effort. He did everything he possibly could. Everything? Are you sure? Did he take the Freedom Caucus furniture shopping? <laughs> did he even Google them? Do you think Donald Trump knows who he's talking to here? No. Trump had a meeting with the Freedom Caucus, and they were asking him all these questions about policy matters, and he said, forget the little can't say this is family television. He said, forget about the little shit, which the Freedom Caucus assumed was Trump's nickname for Sean Spicer. <laughs> In the end, the charmer in chief struck out harder than the douchey guy at the bar who goes up to every girl in the room asking them, are you a model? Because you should totally model. You can't negotiate with the Freedom Caucus, Mr. President. John Boehner could have told you that, but he's busy these days sipping Merlot on the beach and counting his zero fucks. <laughs> The Tea Party sent the Freedom Caucus to Washington with one mission, to scream no in the president's face like the demented offspring of a hyena and a banshee. They didn't have a backup program for if you became president. None of us did, including you. No one expected a businessman to completely understand the nuances, the complicated ins and outs of Washington and its legislative process. We learned a lot about uh, the vote-getting process. We learned a lot about some very arcane rules in, obviously, both the Senate and in the House. Uh, so it's been, certainly for me, it's been a very interesting experience. Well, hey, when it's a matter of life and death for millions of people, the important thing is that you learned a lot. Good try, buddy. Grab an orange slice and a participation ribbon. Did anyone else learn something? Anyone else? Oh, God. OK, Paul Ryan, what did you learn? Doing big things is hard. It's not their fault. They spent 17 
14 whole days trying to reform one-sixth of the nation's economy. And they tried everything, making the bill shorter, issuing empty threats, moving the bill to the right and just kind of crossing their fingers that moderates wouldn't notice. They even made victory commercials before the bill even passed and forgot to not run them after it did. Thank Congresswoman Barbara Comstock for keeping her promise and replacing the Affordable Care Act with the better health care you deserve. Nailed it! Oh, wait. Do you, do you hear that? When you're really quiet and the wind blows just right, you can still hear Paul Ryan sobbing into his Ayn Rand doll. Oh, raggedy Ayn despises your weakness, Paul. Kill your feelings. But at least this stupid repeal and replace charade is over. After this morning, the resolve of our conference to repeal Obamacare and replace it has never been stronger. And I know that we're all going to make a deal on health care. That's such an easy one. Sure. Go for it, guys. Maybe the movie will end differently this time. <laughs> we'll be right back.